All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this 13-inch MacBook Pro model A2159. Um, this is a 2019 model. All right, so first thing we're going to do is use a Pentalo 1.2 or P5 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, you want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern, I remove them. So we got two back near the hinges, and then we got four near the opening, and that's how I'll put them laid out. All right, so this MacBook actually has liquid damage, so we're going to see hopefully the damage isn't too bad. All right, we won't know till we get it open and take a look. We're going to completely disassemble this. Well, not completely, completely, but we're going to remove the motherboard, assuming that um, the screen connector or anything isn't uh, messed up. Okay, so now that we took all those screws out, what we're going to do is let's rotate this to make it a little bit easier to work on. Okay, we use a suction cup. You can use tape or anything, or even if you can, you can just kind of grab this. Like my fingernails, I can get in here even without a suction cup, and then I can lift this up, but the suction cup helps if you can't, all right? And then what you do is you go down the side, and then you push on this and pop the clip up like that. Wait, is this a MacBook Air? No, it is a MacBook Pro. Why is it unpopping so easily? Has somebody opened this before? I'm gonna go over to the side here. Normally, this part is difficult to unclip, so interesting let me see so normally it's popped in like this and then and that's weird these clips are so easy to pop out okay anyways next thing we're gonna do we're gonna remove this bottom cover there's two ways you can do it this way if you have like a soft surface where you're not worried about it sliding around like this then you can actually grab here and you can push with your thumb on the polymer area so push here and kind of pull like this okay or if you're worried about it like hitting the surface, what you can do is you can start here with it up like this, wrap some fingers over this way so it doesn't fall over, and then push down here while you pull down here, just like that, and then you can see it will slide out and release. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, and there we go. Okay, now we're gonna open this up. I can see some stuff here. They said what they spilled, they think it was coconut water, and okay, that doesn't look too good. So it looks like the liquid went all in here like this and went all the way down this way. So that's not a good sign. Um, I'm going to have to see if the, uh, what do you call, if the screen got damaged at all or not. Um, this one I might have to send to my partner for board repair. Anyways, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect the battery. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and peel this thing up here. Okay, carefully, slowly peel this up. All right, now that we got that out of the way, we're going to disconnect this cable. So this cable, there's this little plastic flap here that helps you pull the cable. We're going to pull that back. Okay, then we're going to flip this latch up. Once you flip that latch up, you can grab underneath the cable as close to the connector as possible and then pull straight back and there you go we got that disconnected all right next we're going to remove the battery holding this battery tab in place um, so this is a t5 or torx 5 screw that we're, screwdriver that we're going to need we'll undo that screw okay once you've undone the screw you're going to lift up this tab here okay so you want to lift this up so it's no longer touching the battery board all right you can see it's now hovering and then we're going to open up the screen and press and hold the power button for 15 seconds this will drain any residual power from the board and will make it a lot safer to work on all right if you don't do this there's a good chance that you can fry your computer so just do this it only takes 15 seconds and yeah all right so we're good okay so we are going to completely take this thing apart or at least most of it let's go ahead and check the screen cable first because if that's damaged then there's a good chance it's not going to be worth to fix this because then we're going to have to repair the motherboard and replace the screen and that can be very very costly okay so we're using a t3 or torx 3 screwdriver i don't know why this screw is not coming up with the magnetic part so just pull it out all right remove those two there we go all right we're going to also remove this one though this one isn't as important well actually if we're going to remove the motherboard yeah we're going to have to remove that so let's go ahead and take it out okay all right so we got those two out now we're going to remove this piece here okay 
this little piece that's on top of the cable. And then we're also going to remove the metal tab on top of there. And then we're going to go ahead and disconnect this cable. I just use my fingernail underneath one corner and I just pop it up just like that. Okay. And it feels like it's stuck here with the liquid. So I'm a little worried. Okay. I'm going to try and keep it flat. Try not to crease it. All right. And there we go. All right. Let's see here. The connector itself looks okay. Um, but liquid did get underneath this piece and made it somewhat stuck there. Um, but the connector itself looks fine. So hopefully we'll be okay. I'm going to completely take this thing apart, clean it up, dry it out, and we'll see. Hopefully we won't have any weird issues, okay? Um, but it does look like some liquid made it to here, right, where the headphone jack is. Some made it all the way over to here. Some made it down here and over here. And yeah, it's kind of spread all over the place. So we'll see what happens. Um... <clears throat> Let's see, do I need to remove the wireless antennas? There's a lot of little pieces on here that I think we're going to have to remove. Um, hopefully, it looks like most of these are T5 or Torx 5 screws that we're going to be removing. So, maybe it won't be too bad. I'm going to zoom out here. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm going to be doing. We're going to be removing some of these screws and cables here. Let's actually check this because the power button is right there. Okay. So we're sw we switched back to the T3, our Torx 3 screwdriver, and we're going to remove the two screws holding this metal plate in place. Okay, these screws are actually really long here. Actually, this one's really short. The other one was really long. All right, can we lift this metal plate off? Yes, we can. All right, and let's take a look. Does this look like liquids in it? No, it... Mm, maybe... Okay, there's some crusty stuff there. I'm going to kind of brush that a little. And let's go ahead and pop this connector up and see what we got. Let's zoom in here. Okay, and same thing. Get my fingernail underneath the corner and just pop it up. And there we go. And that kind of doesn't look good. I don't know if you can see that white stuff in that corner. That doesn't look good. I'm going to try and clean that off and see if it cleans off. Um without leaving any burnt damage stuff. Um, but you can also see, oops, you can also see over here. You can also see over here, it got some damage there. So this one is probably not going to be salvageable, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, usually if the power button's damaged, the problem is you lose the touch ID even if you replace the button and um, I'm actually not too sure if you can replace the button without any problems um, but anyways oops I, maybe I should leave it zoomed out because it's hard to make sure this stuff stays in focus but uh, I'll clean that off a little bit because that looks pretty bad and hopefully this cable won't get damaged <sighs> okay I mean it looks better but it's I think I think it's probably fried I don't know if you can see this. The pins on that corner and the pins over there. Yeah, it doesn't really look too good. Um, I'm gonna remove the plastic cover on this side just because it's somewhat in the way. It's not completely in the way, but might as well clear out some room to make it a little bit easier to work on. Okay, then we'll take this out. Set that aside. All right, are we gonna remove this as well? Um, let's see. Let's remove these screws holding the headphone jack thing in place. Okay. I don't know if we'll be able to pull that out, but we'll find out. Okay, there's also this little hex nut thing here that we're probably gonna have to remove. <laughs> So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what size bit do we need for that. 3.5 maybe? Nope, smaller. 3.0. Okay, that's a 3.0. So we're going to use that. Um, it's a hex 3.0. So I don't know if you can see, but it's like that. <clears throat> oh, it's going to be tough. It's stuck inside the screwdriver bit. Oh no. Oh no, how do I get that back out? Okay, there we go. Got that. 
All right, what do we need next here? Let's see, is this T3 or T5? I'm gonna test everything with the T5 before doing the T3. Okay, we're gonna remove this. So we have the speaker here. Let me zoom out again. All right, so I'm gonna remove all the speaker screws and we're gonna pull the speaker out. somewhat stuck there we go or the screw there we go all right ew it's like sticky that thing so get a piece of paper so i can somewhat wipe these things i am probably gonna have to use like water and rubbing alcohol to clean this up better <laughs> okay so i have a piece of paper towel i'm gonna use a little bit of water this is actually distilled water but it doesn't matter any water should be fine I just want to clean this off a little bit, the sticky stuff. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and peel these pieces. All right, so same thing. This has like that tape layer. And then we have this that we can flip the latch back so we can pull this cable out. Okay. And there we go. Let's see if we can lift the speaker up now. Slowly, carefully. I think it's somewhat stuck because of the spill. The spill. Uh oh, those rubber things came out and got stuck in there. So we're going to have to find a way to get them back here. Here you can see some of the spill went back here and under there. I'm going to kind of clean that with the rub, not the rubbing alcohol. I'm just using distilled water and a paper towel. There's some over here as well. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of liquid that got in here, it looks like. Okay. Clean that off. I'm gonna have to fold this over to a clean side. You can see how dirty this paper towel got already. I'm gonna put some more water. Okay, clean that up. Clean that off. Okay, is this all clean for the most part? Okay, so we'll set the speaker aside. Um, oh, there's also some up here. Wow, that liquid got everywhere. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried to... Um, we'll see if it works or not. All right, we got these rubber pieces. We're going to have to pull these off and transfer them over to the speaker. They're kind of stuck there. Um, how am I going to transfer this? So, it's like this. Let's see if I can somehow push this in. Oops. Yeah, this is going to be somewhat of a pain. All right, push half one side in and then get the other half. You kind of work your way around the donut. Okay, just like this. And there we go. All right, that worked. We're going to do the same thing with the other one. Okay, so you get the part that's like rough on top like that. We're going to flip it upside down, right? You get half of it in first at an angle like this. Then you push the other half over and you kind of have to work it in. It's a little bit tricky, but all right. And come on. And there we go. All right. So we got all of those back in. We'll set the speaker aside. Okay. Look at all of that stuff that's sticking on it you gotta be careful because as you can see the cables are moving around there you don't want to accidentally tear those all right what else we got I'm pretty sure these are t3 oh these are actually also t5 okay I'm gonna move this up out of the way a little bit let's see this is also really dirty has some sticky liquid stuff there so we're gonna clean that as well That as well. Okay, let me get a new paper towel because that one's all gross now. Okay, same thing, just fold it up, get some water on it. I'm gonna clean that up as well. Oh 
Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and remove this cable. Also using a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. There are a lot of screws in here. So if you're gonna do this, make sure you're gonna be able to put everything back together. Okay, and again, make sure to keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths and mixing them up can cause damage to the computer. Right, I remove that. We're gonna now pop this cable out. Okay, just like that. And this actually is held in with some adhesive to the fan. So maybe we'll leave that for now. And then when we lift up the fan, it, maybe it will bring that up with it. Okay. Let's see here what else. We got another screw down here, so we're gonna remove that. Okay, again, this is a lot of screws. We're gonna work our way over here. We're gonna remove the wireless antenna screw. Just like that. To remove the wireless antennas, you just go under the tails and pop them up. All right, just like this. Same thing with the other one, under the tail and pop it straight up. Okay, we're gonna see if we have to remove this thing or not. Um, usually I would remove this when I replace the screen, but if I'm removing the motherboard, I likely won't have to remove it, but we'll find out. Okay, I'm gonna remove this screw here as well. Okay, we're gonna remove the screws for the trackpad or touchpad connector. a lot of screws okay this is gonna be somewhat difficult let's get this back off okay then we're gonna same thing pop this up just using a corner you can go if one side doesn't come up you can go to the other side and pop it and there we go all right be careful with this cable I'm gonna actually leave it down because if you peel it up sometimes it um, makes bubbles in the battery and I don't want to do that Okay, there's also some residue here, so we're going to clean that off. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Not bad. Okay, what else we got? Let's remove this speaker here as well. Two screws. Hopefully this one, the rubber pieces will come up with it. Okay, come on. That screw out. Okay, got both screws. Same thing, we're gonna peel up this plastic. Okay, and then we're gonna flip this latch and then we can hopefully pull this cable out. Just wiggle it and pull it out. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can now lift the speaker out of its place. This cable's a little bit in the way, just be careful, you don't wanna damage it. Okay, carefully lift this up and carefully wiggle and lift this up. Okay, oh, that rubber piece got stuck down there, so we're gonna have to do the same thing. Take this piece back out and we're gonna put this in here, okay. Same thing, get half of it in. This part, these are a little bit tricky to put in, so. That, and then just shove it around. Might have to use another little tool because there's not much room here, so I'm gonna use this to help push it. Okay, just like that. And there we go, looks good, so. Now we can set this aside as well. Okay, what else we got? This piece is all, looks really bad from the liquid. I'm gonna try and clean off some of that white powdery stuff. You can see it kind of cleaned up, but as it dries, it's probably gonna turn like that again. Anyways, we're gonna take these two screws out here. Oh, these are T3 or Torx 3, it seems. Okay. It's always good to try everything with the T5 or Torx 5 first because if it doesn't fit, then you can switch down. If you use the T3 and then damage it by trying to remove it, then you're screwed. So it's always good to try with the T5 first. All right, switch back to the T5. Let's go ahead and now pop this out. Okay, so this little cover thing came off. All right, and that just helps hold this connector down. It does look like it's stuck with some dirty stuff, so we're going to clean that off with the 
slightly wet, damp, moist, whatever, paper towel. Okay, just like that. Then we can go ahead and pop this connector up. So same thing, I just use my fingernail and pop that up. And let's take a look here. Is this one damaged? Um, this connector looks okay. All right, so the, the power, the USB-C ports look okay. We're gonna now remove this one here. Okay, looks like just one screw holding this big metal plate in place. Okay. All right, so we got this connector here, which I think it, I'm pretty sure is for the touch bar. We're gonna pop that up. Okay, that looks okay. We got this little connector here. I'm not too sure what that's for. Possibly a keyboard backlight or something. All right, so pick this up. And same thing, we gotta flip the little latch. Okay, once that latch is up, we can go ahead and pull this cable out, usually with this sticker tab. Yep, just like that. Okay, there's also a T5 or Torx 5 screw under here. So we'll remove this. Okay, looks like this is another touch bar connector, so we're gonna pop that up as well. Okay, here we go. And this one kind of folds out and goes into this weird slot, so it's kind of awkward. When we, when we remove the motherboard, you want to be very careful taking that out. I think we got all the motherboard screws out. There's a cable here that we didn't remove, so make sure to disconnect that. Flip this latch up and peel that out. This is actually the keyboard connector, so the keyboard cable goes there and plugs to the motherboard there, or logic board. Okay, then we can go ahead and kind of wiggle this connector up. And we'll take a look. Keyboard connector looks okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and see now if we can pull the motherboard or the logic board out here. We're gonna lift up from this side because we have this cable, the wireless antennas that we left there. So we're gonna lift this way. Okay, and we're gonna kind of pull it towards us. Again, be careful with this cable because the cable does go under there and it is sl slotted through. Okay, can we lift this left side up? It seems to be stuck. Okay, so we're gonna lift the left side up. I'm gonna slowly rotate it a little and slide it out this way so that this cable can come out. Okay, and I think these antennas are somewhat in the way. It would be easier if we remove that, but it looks like we were able to do it. So there we go. This is what the bottom of the motherboard logic board looks like. I don't know what this blue stuff, maybe it came from a screw. <sighs> okay. The bottom of the logic board seems okay. I don't really see much liquid residue damage stuff, anything there. I'm just going to brush off the dust to loosen it. And then I'm just going to use the air blower to kind of get all that loose dust out. Okay. We're gonna make sure if when we're gonna put this back, make sure this metal tab stays up. I accidentally bent it back down. So if I didn't pay attention and I put it back, it would reconnect the battery before everything was properly removed. Oh no, I just noticed this looks really bad here. So if you look up by the LCD LVDS connector there, these little components, let me zoom in more. They actually look fried. So these little components here, you can see they look really bad. Um, we're going to try cleaning this off again. I'm going to run it under some warm water, brush it, clean off all this stuff. Um, most of it doesn't look crazy bad, but this, this part here looks really bad. But here, let me show you where all the liquid went to. Okay, my worry is it went inside of this and damaged that. You can see it looks gross. But, um, okay, so we're going to clean that up. Inside here, I think I don't really see much other stuff to worry about. Let me set the logic board aside for now. Okay, oops, sorry, I'm not zoomed out enough for you guys to see what I'm doing. These connectors look okay. <sighs> It's a little bit dusty, but 
shouldn't be an issue. Whoa. What is, is that a bug? Well, I don't know. Okay, anyways, let's see. Can we lift the fan up with this stuff, or are we going to have to remove something else? Okay, this is actually held down with adhesive here. So let me zoom in. So this thin cable here, it wraps over here. Okay, so we're going to have to actually scrape the adhesive out to get this fingerprint sensor cable out. There we go. All right, so we're going to hold that out of the way. Let's see if I can somewhat clean this. I guess we don't have to take it out if we can just clean it like this. Um, yeah, I don't think we have to take this out. Also, this piece looks to be attached here. Oops, sorry. This piece looks to be attached here, which I think is a microphone. So, yeah, I don't want to peel that up because that's going to cause more damage than good, more harm than good. So we're going to leave that there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some rubbing alcohol on the paper towel, okay? And I'm just going to dab it there to help clean that a little. Okay, so we're going to use that just to kind of get that in there to clean it. But I'm pretty sure this thing looks burnt, so I have a feeling... It's not going to work. I don't know. I'm going to clean this up and we'll find out. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that. Let's go ahead now and I'm going to clean up the motherboard and we'll see. If you did want to remove the fan, there are four screws holding it in place. Oops, let me zoom out here. So if you did want to remove the fan, there's these four screws holding it in place. And then this cable, you'd have to peel it up. There's same thing. You pull up this um, tape piece and then flip the latch and you can pull this out. But this is held in with adhesive. So I'm going to leave that as is. Let me clean up the logic board. We'll put it all back together and we'll see if we have any signs of life at all or if it's completely dead. Okay. Um, oh, one other thing. I am going to at least remove this cable here so I can clean, so I can make sure this is clean. So we're going to peel up this a little um, to get to uncover the screw. I think it's a T3, but let me check. Yep. Okay, so we're going to use the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver here to get that screw out. This is the LCD LVDS connector. Okay, this connects to the screen. This cable isn't the one that gets damaged that a lot of people have been talking about when there's the flex gate. This cable actually doesn't move anywhere, so it doesn't get damaged. But anyways, remove those two screws. Let's go ahead and now pop this cable out. So here you go. We got this connector out. It looks kind of gross, so I'll clean it just to clean it. But uh, the place where the liquid stuff is isn't going to affect anything. Um, it's more just cosmetic, but we'll clean it off anyways if we can. Okay. All right, that cleaned off nicely. Okay, you can see it looks a lot nicer now. And the other side looks fine, maybe a little bit dirty, so we'll just clean it. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside now and I'm gonna go clean the motherboard or the logic board and we'll see if any, if there's any luck. Oh, actually you can see on this back side, there's signs of liquid damage back here as well. So yeah, not good. All right, we're gonna clean that up. We'll clean both sides. Um, basically, I'm gonna use warm water and then I'll use some rubbing alcohol to help dry it up. And I'll use my electric air blower to completely dry it. But um, yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you all in a bit. All right, so I'm back. So let's take a close look here now. All right, so these actually look like they might be okay. Ah. Got some lint stuck in my nail. All right, so here you can see, these were the ones that looked like they were damaged before, but they kind of look okay. Let me see if I can zoom in more. All right, look kind of okay. Er, I don't know, one looks a little bit bad. Anyways, cleaned all of that. 
Okay, you can see all the liquid residue is gone there. Okay, there's no more liquid in between there that was looking really gross before. All right. So you got all of that cleaned up. We're going to flip it over and you can look at the back side. Right, all the liquid that was running across here is gone as well, the residue. Actually, there's some stuff still kind of stuck there. Let me see if I can clean that off. Let's see. I don't think it'll clean off, but I'll try with a little distilled water and paper towel. Let's see if we can clean in this little gap here. It looks like it cleaned up okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to reassemble this thing and hope that we have some life in this computer. Okay, zoom back out. And again, this is a little tricky because we do have to somewhat slide this over this way. And then we also have to make sure these antennas come up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these antennas up out of the way and then make sure that this slides over here. Okay, good. All right, and then what we're going to have to do is work our way over, make sure these cables end up on top. Okay, pick that back up. Make sure this cable ends up on top. Make sure this cable ends up on top. And also make sure it's slightly bent upwards. Okay. And we have this other cable down here as well that we have to make sure ends up on top. I'm gonna use this tool to help pull it out. There we go. And we'll slowly, carefully drop that down. Hopefully everything that needs to be on top is on top. This little cable as well here. Okay, I'm going to just make sure, confirm that we got everything that needs to be on top back on top. This one, that one, this one, this one, that, this, this, that, that, and that. Okay, so we got everything where we need it to be. This might be a little bit tricky. We got to get this rubber thing back into place. Okay. Make sure this lines up. Make sure this lines up. Come on, go back in your... All right, there we go. Okay, I think that's good. And let's go ahead and start getting some screws back in here. So, oh, shoot, I have to take this back out. Forgot to put back the LCD LVDS connector. <laughs> that sucks. All right, so let's go ahead and lift this back up. Rotate it back out slide it back out okay there we go can't forget this cable this is the most <laughs> this is one of the most important ones you won't get any display if you don't have this okay line this back up click it back down it would help to see where the screw holes are but all right do it that way okay so with the t3 torx 3 let me get the screws back holding this thing. Okay, so peel that back up out of the way. Okay, get that screw in. Perfect, if my head's getting in the way, I'm sorry. Just I'm too busy focusing on what I'm doing right now to see what's recording. Gonna hold this out of the way, same thing, get that screw in there. Oops. Alright, hold that out of the way. Get that screw in. There we go. Alright, so now we got both screws in. Let's go ahead now and put this back. Okay, same thing. Slide that in from under our way over to the side to get this in okay then we just rotate this again make sure all the cables end up back on top battery cable okay this cable here and this cable under here okay drop that in Right, make sure it's lined up again. Make sure these rubber pieces line up. Okay, 
This one's not in right. Get in there. There we go. Okay, now we've got all these rubber pieces in. Oh, this one's... There we go. Get that in there. Good. All right, so we got everything in now. I think all the cables that need to be on top are on top. Okay, let's go ahead and start putting things back together. What I'm going to do first is to get all these cables reconnected because then that actually will hold the motherboard into the correct position. So line this up. Can be a little bit tricky. Let me make sure it's good. Okay, line that up. Click that into place. All right, line this one up. Line this one up. This one goes at a goes sideways here, so get that lined up and click that into place. This one, line that up, click that in. Good. All right. Get this little cable. This is gonna be tough. Sorry, I should zoom in for you guys to see this better. All right. Grab this cable, slide it back, and then while holding it down, you can use that to pull it in. And then we'll slide the latch down with our finger. Okay, you don't want to use a tool to like flip it over because a lot of times I've seen people rip those things off. Okay, we're gonna plug back in the trackpad cable here. Just line it up and click it down. Perfect. Okay, we got the LCD LVDS connector. You pull this one back slightly. Okay, and click that in. Good. All right, wireless antennas here. Line these up. Make sure that when they're lined up, they shouldn't be able to move around all over the place. So it's okay. Once it's lined up, you can see when we move it around, it holds. Then you can click that down. Same thing with the other one. Oh, I'm going to have to mute my other phone. Click that in. There we go. Give me a second. I'm going to mute my phone and I'll be back. Okay, there we go. We're gonna save the battery one for later, all right? Because this cable you don't wanna plug in while you're working on the computer. So I'll get this one, make sure the latch is up. Okay, get that cable in. It's a little bit difficult for me to see. Get it straight in, good. Push that into place. And then same thing, slide your finger over to latch it down. And you can put this piece back into place. Okay, this cable, just line it up and push that down. Okay, this little cable, same thing, line that up and push it down. Okay, here we go. Oops, sorry, that cable. All right, what else we got? We're gonna have to start putting back all these other little things. Um, so this T3, okay. So we're gonna use the T3 Torx 3 to put these two screws back in first. I'm pushing it over this way to make sure it's as close over to the edge as possible, okay. Get those two in. There we go. All right, that board is secured. Let's see what's next. Let's switch over to the T5, our Torx 5 screwdriver. Um, we should probably put back all the speakers first, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have the speaker here. It has to go in at an angle. <sighs> There's some dust on it, so let me actually clean that real quick. Okay. Right off. All right, then we're gonna go at an angle like this. Okay, slot it in, slowly drop it down. Okay, these pieces will align with those things from before. Again, we're using the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. I'm gonna get these screws in. I'm gonna loosely fit it first so I can make sure they line up. Second one here. All right, and last one. And now we can go ahead and tighten it. If you noticed, I actually twist the screwdriver backwards to hear it click into place. So that way I know the screw went into the proper area. 
All right, then we're gonna put this speaker connector in. So pull it slightly back, get that in. All right, it goes in by itself and then slide your finger over. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and get the metal cover for this back on. All right. Okay. And we have two screws here, so we'll get this. Again, we're gonna loosely fit the screw first, so that way we can align this. You can see it can move around. Wanna make sure to get it all aligned, so we'll get this, line it up. Second screw, and now we can go ahead and tighten that down. Tighten this down, make sure it's lined up. It's not lined up, so I need to move it. There we go, I loosen the other one a little. There we go, tighten that down. Then we can go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, what else we got? We got one screw here, then we got the two here. Okay, so we'll take this one, get the motherboard screw back in. There we go. We're gonna work our way over to the touch, uh, touch pad, track pad, whatever you wanna call it. Get those two screws in. Same thing, I'm going to loosely fit it first. Okay. Go, and we'll get this one in. There we go. Okay, other motherboard screw. Just like this. Another motherboard screw. Okay, get that in, perfect. All right, let's get this speaker in. Same thing, it's a little dusty, so let me again clean this one off. Okay, I'm gonna go at an angle again. Oops, at an angle like this. Get that in, slowly drop that, line everything up. Okay, let's get these two screws in. Again, I'm gonna loosely fit it first to make sure it lines up go second one and there we go now we can go ahead and tighten those down all right now we'll get this in make sure the latch is up pull this back get that in come on go in there we go pull that in good slide your finger over to latch it down and there's not much room to do this on this one because the raised pieces there we go then we'll put this adhesive thing back in okay what do we got next okay we got the screws for this connector cover thing okay so let's get that in Oh, we need to switch back to the T3. Torx 3. Okay. Get that screw in loosely. Second one, same thing. Alright, hold it lined up and tighten that down. Line that up. Tighten that down. Perfect. Alright, switching back to the T5 or Torx 5. Right, don't forget the motherboard screw under here first. Perfect, we'll get this little metal cover again. Line that up. Oops, I didn't mean to pick up the screw. Okay, make sure it's lined up, hold it in place, get the screw in, tighten that down. Perfect. Okay, what else we got? We got the little covers for this. Um, I think we need to switch back to the T3, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that one after because let's go ahead and do this first. So this one we have to use the, um, the little special bit, the hex one. Okay. All right. So get that in. Try and twist this. All right, 
right, good, it's working. I'm gonna use the screwdriver to make it a little bit tighter. Okay, we're done with that. Switch back over to the T5. We'll get this metal cover back on top. Let me actually clean this a little because it has some residue on it. Okay. Alright, there we go. And get this lined back up again. Okay, same thing, two screws. Oh, these are T3 as well. So we'll switch to the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. All right, this one had a very long screw. And then the other one over here is very short because it goes into that other bolt that we just put back. Okay, tighten that down this down all right let's put back the little screen uh, connector metal plates get that in okay second one again we just loosely fit it first to make sure we can get both screws in then we can go ahead and tighten it down just like that and just like that okay get this one lined up as well there we go get this screw in all right tighten that down Good. All right. Let's see if we're lucky or not. If it's going to power up, we're switching back to the T5, Torx 5. We want to line up the battery connector here. It's a little bit now more to one side. I don't know if I can bend it over a bit, push it over that way. Okay. And then we're going to let this go down and get this screw into place. Okay. So this one, the battery connector should be shoved over to the right a bit more. So I'm going to try and push that. Okay, then we'll tighten this down. Good. Oh, I almost forgot this little plastic cover here. Let's put that as well. It's using a T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. to just plug the last piece of the battery connector in this one just like all the other ones grab that plastic tab to help pull it and get that in once you get that in same thing you just slide the latch over with your finger and there we go put this little um, cover thing back on top just like this stick it down okay let's go ahead and put the bottom cover oh I actually need to clean that as well um, so right now I'm just going to test it and then I'll, if it works, um, we'll clean that up and put that back. But for now we'll flip this over. So far nothing. Okay. Pushing the trackpad, nothing. I mean, I think it was dead for a long time, so it's probably not going to turn on anyways until I plug it in. So let's go ahead and plug in the charger and see if, if there's any sign of life at all. So far nothing. Nothing. Power button. Still nothing. Yeah, I think it's completely fried. Actually, it's clicking right now. Hmm. Let's see if anything comes on the screen. I'll be amazed if it comes up. But you hear the trackpad clicking? So we have some sign of life. Nothing on the screen. Sometimes it takes a while. Still nothing on the screen. 
we'll see if anything comes on the screen or on the touch bar. The touch bar usually won't come up unless um, the Mac boots to the user and logs in slightly. So I have a feeling it's not going to do anything. But um, yeah, I mean, it's something. Okay, anyways, I'm going to clean the bottom cover and I'll be back. Uh, yeah, but pretty much we're just going to reassemble it. This cover needs to be slid back into place to go on the right way. Um, yeah, I'll do that and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back. Mouse is still clicking, but nothing's on the screen. Oh, I see the touch bars lit up. Let's see if I force shut this off. That means it's actually doing something. So I'm going to shut this back off. I'm going to put the bottom cover on. I don't think the screen's going to work. I have a feeling the screen was destroyed because there was liquid in here. Um, I don't know if the screen itself is destroyed or the cable or a combination. Because if liquid got in the screen, then it probably fried it. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and slide this cover in like this. Okay. So you line up the edge side edges here. And then you just, while holding this down here, because that's where the little clips that go under are, then you can go ahead and push. And we're going to have to do that twice on both sides to make sure it lines up. And then we can go ahead and push this down. But you want to check, make sure this looks lined up. If it's not, we can actually use these feet to kind of move it over. And now it's more lined. And then we can go ahead and click that all down. And then we're going to use the Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver to put back the bottom screws. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, make sure to, excuse me, to like, subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Uh, if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay as I get the last few screws in. I am going to see what happens if I try and connect an external monitor. I might have to disconnect the internal monitor for the uh, external monitor to work, but we'll find out. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. All right, let's go ahead and drop this. Bye.